54 years ago to the day, a young Jewish boy from a small town in the Carpathian Mountains woke up not far from Goa's beloved Weimar, in a place of internal infamy called Buchenwald. He was finally free, but there was no joy in his heart. He thought there never would be again. Liberated a day earlier by American soldiers, he remembers their rage at what they saw. And even if he lives to be a very old man, he will always be grateful to them for that rage. Though he did not understand their language, their eyes told him what he needed to know, that they too would remember and bear witness. And now I stand before you, and I am filled with profound and abiding gratitude to the American people. We are on the threshold of a new century, a new millennium. What will the legacy of this vanishing century be? How will it be remembered in the new millennium? Surely it will be judged, and judged severely, in both moral and metaphysical terms. These failures have cast a dark shadow over humanity. Two world wars, countless civil wars, the senseless chain of assassinations, Gandhi, the Kennedys, Martin Luther King, Sadat, Robin, bloodbaths in Cambodia and Nigeria, India and Pakistan, Ireland and Rwanda, Eritrea and Ethiopia, Sarajevo and Kosovo, the inhumanity of the Gwalg and the tragedy of Hiroshima, and on a different level, of course, Auschwitz and Treblinka. So much violence, so much indifference. What is indifference? A strange and unnatural state in which the lines blur between light and darkness, dusk and dawn, crime and punishment, cruelty and compassion, good and evil. What are its courses and inescapable consequences? Is it a philosophy? Is there a philosophy of indifference conceivable? Can one possibly view indifference as a virtue? It is necessary at times to practice, to simply keep one's sanity, live normally, enjoy a fine meal and a glass of wine, as the world around us experiences harrowing upheavals. Of course, indifference can be tempting. More than that, seductive. It is so much easier to look away from victims. It is so much easier to avoid such rude interruptions of our work, our dreams, our hopes. It is, after all, awkward, troublesome to be involved in another person's pain and despair. Indifference is not a beginning. It is an end. Indifference, then, is not only a sin, it is a punishment. In the place that I come from, society was composed of three simple categories, the killers, the victims, and the bystanders. Our only miserable consolation was that we believed that Auschwitz and Treblinka were closely guarded secrets, that the leaders of the free world did not know what was going on behind those black gates and barbed wire. And now we know. We learned, we discovered, that the Pentagon did know. The State Department knew. And so once again, I think of the young Jewish boy from the Carpathian...